so far to Harbor Wolf. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our sand. Over two years ago, I made a poll on my community tab. My second poll ever. It was a yes or no question to a thing that never happened. No fault of mine, Leaky Warrior never replied. But I didn't like only having two options. At some point in my life, I heard about the rule of threes, a writing principle that suggests a trio of things is more interesting than other numbers, and I stuck with it. If you've read my fiction writing, I can probably ruin it for you by telling you to look for any time I describe a situation with a list of three nouns. So with this poll, I applied the same principle. The options were yes, no, and a third option that, in my head, would be equivalent to, I don't care. It was the first thing that popped into my head, coming from an extremely short and old local news clip. Back here live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. You're great zombie. And good times here at the Waterfront Village, open for the next 11 days. It was just funny to me, and it had a dual purpose in the Flat Earth debunking community. There's an expression of the problem of infinite regress that uses the Flat Earth model in which the world is situated on the back of a giant turtle. When asked what supports the turtle, the answer is an even large turtle, which is itself part of an endless column of increasingly large infinite turtles. It's turtles all the way down. The phrase has become something of a meme on my channel, almost always being the neutral option on my polls and occasionally referenced throughout videos. For a long time now, I've been teasing that one day, I will in fact make a video about turtles. So today is the day, everyone. Celebrate, for he is here. Your Lord, your God, to students. All of the silly memeing aside, I really do like turtles. They're fascinating animals. First, there appears to be a paradox with their very existence. How does something so slow and, excluding some species, effectively combat useless, continue to exist? More, how have they managed to do so for over 200 million years? They have a somewhat mysterious history from an evolutionary perspective, which is to say, we're not entirely sure how they became what they are. We have some ideas. For instance, there are several ancient reptile species that evolved a widened rib cage that, it is believed, made them more effective burrowers. At some point, it's theorized, these burrowers gradually moved on to become a more aquatic species which is where we find ancient reptiles who were developing armor on their wide bellies that's very reminiscent of a turtle shell. Beyond that, we don't really know how the turtle got its shell, and that's a wonderful mystery to me. There's a lot of diversity to the turtle order. From the tiniest, most adorable little guys like this speckled padlopper tortoise, to the absolutely gargantuan leatherback sea turtle, they really only have a few basic things in common with every member of the order. The defining feature is of course their shell, which most people know by now is not a separate entity that the turtle lives inside of, it's part of their body, effectively an inside-out ribcage. They also all lack teeth, at least the living ones do. Some prehistoric turtles had proper teeth, but today, all turtles have some manner of beak which is usually sharp and sometimes serrated, used for breaking up their food. They're all slow moving on the land, with the reason being very simple. If you look at the way other faster moving reptiles run, you can see that they need to twist their entire torso in order to achieve their stride. Turtles can't do that because their shell is in the way. Their biology made the trade-off between high mobility and tougher physical defense, and the success of that trade-off is pretty hard to argue with. I think turtles are fascinating to me because they're like an old world species, if that makes sense. Here's the way I see it. Way back before the first die-off, in the Permian period, we had a lot of arthropods, things with exoskeletons like insects and crabs and whatnot, and tetrapods, which are your basic reptiles and amphibians. In the Triassic period following this, the age of dinosaurs began, and this is likely where we would find the oldest ancestors of turtle. Turtles are, arguably, older than dinosaurs, yet have completely outlived them. Turtles watched the few remaining dinosaurs become birds, all while remaining a turtle. 
Turtles watched early mammals evolve from rodents that hid in caves to the industrious and ever-growing homo sapiens that threaten their ecosystems today, all while remaining a turtle. So, how long can a single turtle actually live? What's the lifespan of something so slow, cumbersome, and seemingly defenseless? Well, for that, we're going to turn to my favorite subject of this video. Not a turtle exactly, but a tortoise. A member of the Testudines order, and that counts. I'd like to introduce you to my friend, my favorite animal in existence, Jonathan. Jonathan is a Seychelles giant tortoise, a subspecies of the Aldebra giant tortoise. Jonathan was brought to the island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic Ocean in the year 1882. At the time, Jonathan was around 50 years old. That's right, he was hatched in 1832, making him about 189 years old. He's the oldest living land animal in existence. Oddly enough, there isn't much to say about Jonathan's life. He's had it pretty easy. He was brought to St. Helena and he just lives there, at the governor's house, and is cared for by the government of St. Helena. Honestly, he might be the most interesting thing about the entire island right now. The only other notable fact is that it's the same island the British sent Napoleon to once everyone got sick of him. If you're wondering who the island thinks is the more notable resident, I'll just note that Napoleon isn't on a St. Helena coin, but Jonathan is. Jonathan continues to roam happily and relatively healthily around the grounds today. He is unfortunately blind from cataracts and cannot smell food, so it has to be given to him, but he has reportedly retained excellent hearing. According to his vet, he likes to wander toward the nearby tennis court when it's being used and seems to like listening to the matches. A few years ago, his caregivers decided to give him a bath, giving his shell a nice deep clean for the first time in a long time. The video they shot for it makes me happy. It almost looks like Jonathan's trying to turn around and scare away the person cleaning him, but he just can't do it quickly enough. For a vet to be looking after the oldest known living land animal in the world, what an honor. What an amazing thing, you know. I'm in my profession because I love animals. And I've got here the oldest known living land animal in the world, and I'm looking after him. Isn't that amazing? So that's all about Jonathan. Jonathan is a tortoise, he's very big, he's very old, and he's very chill. He doesn't seem to be bothered by anything, and I honestly wonder if he is aware that he lives a life of luxury and will never have to worry about predators. I imagine this is why Jonathan seems to get along so well with humans. He's never known a threat in his life, so he sees humans as caregivers and as occasional friendly acquaintances when tourists get to see him. I'd like to get to meet him someday. What else can be said about turtles? Oh, I know. There's one more thing, and this will be the end of the video. Something to make you smile between the heavy videos I've been putting out lately. So yeah, enjoy some sea turtles. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. 
If you want to support me further, consider becoming a member or a patron or checking out my merch or my Amazon links. Thank you, and I will see you over the curve, Space Cowboys. In a fast cosmic arena. Our imagined self-importance. The delusion that we have some...